Hey, welcome. So I wanted to talk about groove boxes and sequencers and the way that they interleave. Uh, so it is a lovely Saturday here. I have the house to myself for a precious few hours and I am procrastinating working on my bathroom remodel, which is what I should be doing. Uh, but the reason is that I have for the past two or so months been having fever dreams about groove boxes and sequencers and kind of uh, music production workflow type of topics and uh, this has been there's been a lot of a lot of gas a lot of gear acquisition syndrome a lot of like deep diving and rabbit holing on you know this device versus that device and pros and cons and all this stuff and um, I I finally kind of at the end of this two or so months made a decision bought a thing and it's been this huge sigh of relief and I feel like I've, I've gotten over a big hurdle and I'll say this is like my own mental hurdle but I imagine if you're watching this video, you had, you've been in similar, uh, similar experiences, right? So basically I wanted to kind of talk about um, some of the conclusions I came to and the uh, sort of a revelation that I've had um, that I think has helped me kind of move past uh, where I was uh, feeling stuck. So let's talk about groove boxes in general. So uh, a groove box is a, a relatively new um, product category and Basically, what we mean by that is uh, one device, typically in a box form factor, um, in which you can create an entire track uh, or maybe an entire song. The difference between a track and a song is, I think, kind of kind of very person to person and, and you know, musical style to musical style. Um, certainly for a lot of genres, um, you know, a track and a song might be identical. But um, for our purposes, I think I think it's fair to say that on any groove box, you can make a complete track. You can't necessarily make a complete song depending on the complexity of whatever type of music you're trying to make. But if a groove box allows you to get a track down, you know, kind of quickly and easily um, with a fully fledged idea, even if you end up swapping out instruments or samples or something later, that's fine. That's what its purpose is. A groove box is sort of a, a musical sketch pad um, where you can quickly jot down an idea, get it out there, and then, you know, hear it back to kind of be able to get into that feedback loop of figuring out, okay, this sounds good, this doesn't sound good, let's tweak this, let's tweak that, let's remove this bass sound and put in, you know, my beefy analog synth instead, that kind of thing, right? Cool. So in terms of the devices that I own today, um, I've got four here next to me that I would consider to be groove boxes. First uh, is the Volca sample. I have the original version here um, with Pagen's firmware on it, um, which Pagen's firmware is pretty much required to like get the most out of this instrument. It's amazing. Um, well, here, I just slipped. I just said instrument instead of groove box, and I actually want to make a distinction there. Um, so I would, in my opinion, um, an instrument is something that is not designed to make an entire track or an entire song around. So for example, a guitar is obviously an instrument. Could you make an entire song on the guitar? Yeah, sure you could. Um, but most people are going to want to choose to add other elements beyond just guitar, like maybe vocals, maybe drums, whatever, right? Uh, so an instrument, I think, is designed more to allow you to create sounds, to create, you know, melodies or percussive rhythms or whatever, um, but not necessarily to make an entire song out of or an entire track out of. Now, the Volca sample, is it an instrument? Well, kind of, yes. I, I would say that a groove box contains instruments. So in terms of the Volca sample, you have 10 different tracks, and you could say that each of those are instruments. So the, the Volca sample basically contains 10 different instruments, and you can layer them all um, simultaneously. Well, technically, you can layer nine of them simultaneously to um, build out your track or your song. Now, is this sold as a groove box? Is it marketed as a groove box? No, it's not. It's marketed as a, a sample sequencer or a sample player. Um, but, I mean, if you watch many people making music with this, I think it can't really be argued that you can make a very full-fledged track with just this. It's going to have a particular sound. Um, the sound quality on this is lower than most other instruments, and so it has it's really good for kind of a lo-fi sound. Um, so it's not going to be great for every genre, but absolutely people make incredible music with just this one box and nothing else, and um, I think it's fantastic. And this is one of those things where even though I now have much more expensive and fancier and more feature-rich hardware, I don't think I'm ever going to sell this one. It's just too good at what it does. And if um, if I want just to, like, basically if I want to bang out a lo-fi beat real quick on the couch or even at the beach or wherever, like, it's hard to beat what the Volca sample can do. So um, next one I want to 
pick up here is the Novation Circuit. This is the OG original version. I've only had this for a couple months, so I'm I'm definitely not an expert at it. And um, but it's a simple enough device that I feel like the workflow is is good, and it's um, you know I've, I've been able to pick it up quickly. Um, I also have the Novation SL Mark III, which is their big flagship MIDI controller that has basically the same sequencer in it. So I really like that I have kind of the same same or similar workflow between those two devices. Um, but you know this one, the big difference is that this one actually contains sample playback uh, capabilities as well as two different synth engines in it. So um, the, the circuit's kind of unique in that not only can it play back samples, but you know you actually have legit digital synths inside this. Now your ability to tweak sounds on the synths is somewhat limited to these eight macro knobs in terms of all the deep diving into sound design. You have to do that through their software on a computer. Um, but still, I mean, it, you can do a heck of a lot with this. And I think absolutely there's tons of examples of people, people making entire tracks and entire songs with just the circuit and nothing else. Um, it can also be used to uh, sequence external gear via MIDI, which I think is really powerful. And that's uh, kind of from this tier up. Uh, I think that's a hallmark that you would want to see in any groove box. Is it necessary? Not necessarily, but I think that in terms of workflow, like I said, a lot of the workflow is going to be using this as a scratch pad. You get down a basic idea and then you say, okay, well, you know, I like this bass line that I wrote on here, but the actual synth sounds I'm getting out of this aren't quite what I want. So instead, let me take that bass line I wrote, send it as MIDI notes out to another dedicated uh, synthesizer or VST or something and use that sound instead with the MIDI notes I wrote in here. That's what the kind of MIDI sequencing capability lets you do. And that's really, really useful and really powerful, right? I think that um, something like the circuit is great for, you grab it, you go out somewhere, go to the cafe, go to the park, mess around, make, make you know, the kernel of a song that you enjoy, and then bring it home to the studio, plug this in, sequence everything else from it. Um, and I would say that's kind of like the dream workflow that I've been obsessing over. And I will say... Um, with the original circuit, there's, I mean, certainly there's, there's plenty of limitations. And really the thing I've been dreaming about is like, since I also have the SL Mark III, I want to be able to write a sequence on here when I'm out on the go, bring it home, plug it into the SL Mark III, transfer the sequence there, and then use the SL Mark III to run my whole studio. To me, that just makes so much sense. They're all Novation products. They all use the same component software. Like it should be just plug and play, but it's not. Um, unfortunately, there is no way to like get these two devices to talk directly. Um, well, I should say no easy way. There's no way of exporting a sequence from here and importing it on the other one, to my knowledge. The only way that you can actually do this is to plug MIDI out from here to MIDI in on something else, press play here, press record on the other one. And so you just literally play these MIDI notes into the other sequencer and record it. It works, but you know, it's it's cumbersome. It's not, it's not great. It's not a great workflow, unfortunately. So I really do hope Novation innovates on this a bit more and like gets gets their various devices to talk more fluidly to each other so that um, you know people like me that own multiple of them or like the new market share of people who would want to own multiple of them if they could do that um, would be catered to. So I will say um, the circuit, I'm, I'm kind of impressed with everything it can do. Um, it's definitely not um, my favorite of the things here, but in terms of it being like a complete self-contained thing, I love it. And as a side note, I will say, this one has a built-in speaker Obviously, it's not great quality speaker, but you know, I mean, it's 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 not bad either. Um, and in terms of you know, sitting on the couch, just chilling out, messing around with stuff, like I end up using this built-in speaker quite a lot. Um, and I think because of the built-in speaker and because of like Novation style of all these pretty you know rainbow-colored lights, my four-year-old daughter loves this thing. And so, even though I feel like I have somewhat outgrown the circuit. I probably also won't sell it. I'm going to give it to my daughter as like her first kind of music making device. Um, and not her first, actually. I, I also got her the Blip Blocks uh, After Dark, which is like specifically a kid designed synth. And she connects with the circuit way more than this like quote unquote kid synth. Um, I think largely because the sounds that this makes um, or the, the stuff I have loaded in there is like a lot of kind of e-piano soft kind of sounds. And she likes the pretty sounds that come out of it versus the blip blocks is better for kind of harsher sounds. And um, she doesn't like those harsh sounds quite as much. So anywho, um, the circuit I think is absolutely great design, um, plenty of limitations, but you know, it's, it's, it's good for what it is. So the next one I got here is the electron model samples. I've got mine modified a little bit with a, um, uh, an overlay. It's like a vinyl cover that kind of 
changes the way it looks and some stickers and usually I keep my little battery pack on the side here too because it doesn't have internal batteries. And um, this thing is what I really bought as my music making um, sketch pad, my, my kind of on the go, take it anywhere, uh, bang out ideas, bring it back home to the studio and flesh it out, that kind of workflow. And I will say I've now, um, I've now had this for over a year. I've made tons of videos on it. And the, um, it, it has its limitations, but I think for the way I've been using it, the limitations are generally a positive thing. Um, the, the only thing that's really missing is polyphonic MIDI sequencing. So this can be used to sequence other devices. It has six tracks. Each of them can output its own independent MIDI sequence. So you can use this to sequence up to six other um, hardware uh, synths or software synths or whatever you're using, which is awesome. I mean, sequencing six things from this is really, really good. Um, however, each of those sequences is monophonic, meaning one note at a time. So it's if you're pairing it with monophonic synths, great, perfect pairing with that. Um, if you're trying to pair it with polyphonic synths, it just doesn't work as well. You can use multiple tracks to send out um, like a poly sequence, you know, that way, but it's it's a pain, it's not intuitive, and it's, it's not really worth it. You're using up too many tracks for like one chord. So um, in terms of what it can do, I mean, this really is designed to be a drum machine. And uh, this one, it is marketed a bit more as a groove box, I think, though, where it's like, it's a, a rhythm groove box where it's, it's designed for writing rhythm and percussion sections. It's not really designed for writing melodic sections. Now that said, I do use it to write melodic sections pretty frequently, but they're going to be on the simpler end of things, you know, like a one note bass line going up and down and stuff like that. I think it's good for that, but yeah, you try to write chords on this or you try to write a more complex melody, um, even things like pads, not, it's just not the best for that. So um, I have found that kind of over time, the model samples by itself was not quite enough for what I wanted. Like if I'm going between the model samples in the circuit, it's like, it just depends on what I want to do. If I want a more complete sounding song with both drum parts and melodic synth parts, then the circuit is better suited for that because it does all that in one box. Um, but if I want kind of more, uh, I think, interesting rhythms, more complex rhythms, um, or also in the, the specific genres of ambient music, generative music, um, IDM, uh, where you have like really complex rhythms, the model samples is just better for that. It has uh, the sequencers way deeper. It can do way more in terms of the, the patterns, the complexity of the patterns that you make. Also, um, while it doesn't have any explicit uh, you know, onboard synths, it only has the six sample tracks, it is fully capable, and I would say even somewhat designed for wave cycle synthesis, which is where you take a um, any little tiny audio snippet, which could be a, uh, a single cycle oscillator, like a single waveform, it could be a wave table, or it could literally be any audio file that you just take a tiny little slice of, um, and you loop that over and over, and you can make synth tones out of it. And I've um, actually have this other little video series on this I'm doing right now, so like, um, and plenty of other people have done this as well. So like wave cycle synthesis, um, also through, it's, it's definitely quite a bit of work, but you could do full on granular synthesis with this too. I'm not saying it's the best for that, but it definitely can do it. So like this is, this has actually very significant um, synthesis and sound design capabilities. Is it the best workflow for those things? Arguable, I'm gonna say, eh, it depends. Um, personally, I really enjoy it. I like the workflow. Um, but you know, a, a full on dedicated synthesizer can probably go even deeper. Um, for example, like a, a very simple thing is like the, the note range that you have in terms of taking a sample, making it your synth tone, your oscillator, and then pitching it up and down. You can only go up and down um, two octaves. Uh, so for a total of four octave range, you know, down to up to, which isn't really that much. Um, the other device, uh, like the circuit can go uh, on a much higher range, four octaves, I think, up and down. So, um, so like there's some limitations that way, right? Um, but yeah, in, in general, I highly recommend the model samples. Like it's just a fantastic device for what it does, for what it does well. And um, I think absolutely there's tons of examples of people using just this to make certainly full tracks Again, full songs, arguable, if you're doing pattern chaining and you know you can program a full song into this, I think um, it's going to be really catered towards certain genres, 
it's not really going to work for every genre, but I think for a lot of the type of music I like to make, um, the model samples is beautiful for that. So I'm still very thrilled on this. I still use it frequently. And I mean, just the other day, my family went to the beach and I brought this and my little battery pack and some headphones. And I just, you know, jammed out at the beach with this thing. And like, it's great for that. It's really great. And I will also say that in terms of the general price range here, like, you know, the Volca sample is cheap enough that if I lose it, I'm not really going to shed a tear over it. Um, the model samples is getting to that point where like, if I lose it, I'm like, ah, it's going to hurt, but I can, I can afford it. It's $300. Like I'll be okay. Um, whereas when we start going above this tier into kind of the 500 plus dollar range, that's where I'm like bringing in my next little thing here. The Electron Digitone. When I went to the beach the other day, I could not bring myself to take my brand new Digitone to the beach <laughs> because as you may know, um, sand and salt water is not good for electronics. And this thing costs, you know, $600 ish, 650 ish used 800 new, like it's a significant investment. And if I lost this, I would shed a tear. So, um, uh, that was an awkward segue, but yeah, the next thing I want to bring up is the electron digitone. I just bought this, um, very recently, a couple weeks ago. So I'm, I'm very new to it. I definitely don't, don't have it all figured out yet. Um, but, uh, but the Digitone is not a groove box, I hear you say. Um, you doth protest. It's, is the Digitone a groove box, though? Well, it's not marketed as a groove box. It's marketed as an FM synthesizer. And this is kind of the revelation that I had recently. So because I have the circuit and because I have the model samples, I've been really kind of deep diving in these past couple months on the new generations of the Novation circuit, the uh, the circuit tracks and the circuit rhythm. And I have watched so many hours of video and live streams and read all this stuff and all this on them. And like, I, even though I've never, I've never used either of those devices, I, I touched the rhythm in a store once, but you know, that's it. Um, I've never used them. I feel like I pretty thoroughly know the workflow and all that because of just all this deep dive rabbit hole research I've done on them. And, um, in terms of the circuit rhythm, I'm very impressed with it, and I think it's something I, I probably will get in the future. Um, it's it's not really comparable to any of these other devices. It's more comparable to either the Electron Digitact or the um, the Roland SP404. I'd say it's close, most closely related to the SP404. So it's a sampler, and none of these other things that I've shown here are samplers. None of them have the ability to record audio coming into them, whereas the circuit rhythm does. Um, and the Digitact also does, and the SP404 also does, as well as the whole MPC series, right? So um, the it, it's just a different class. Uh, samplers aren't really necessarily groove boxes. Now, can you have a groove box with sampler capabilities? Yeah, absolutely. And I I would say the Digitact is that, right? It's 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 a sampler, but it also has all of the kind of groove box functionality all there in one box, and that's really cool. And I think that's kind of what the circuit rhythm is going for, also. Let's do it all in one box. Have your groove box, you know, uh, get out your basic ideas, your sketch pad kind of stuff, but also have the ability to record your samples coming into it. So in terms of the, uh, my gas for the, the rhythm, it's still there. It's still solid. I think I'm probably going to buy one at some point in the future. But the one that I really like vacillated on for a long time was the circuit tracks. Because again, I already own the OG, OG circuit. Do I really need the upgrade to the tracks? Now, in terms of value, it's only about a $200 difference. So it's like, I would get rid of this, pay 200 and have the tracks. That's not that bad. Um, but the tracks just has a lot of limitations. Basically all the same limitations that the circuit has are carried over into the tracks. There's now it does have new abilities and the ability that excites me the most is, is it's audio in, uh, through sidechain. So basically what that means is you can take any other synth um, or any other sound making device, put it to the audio in of the circuit tracks, and then apply the tracks effects, um, reverb, delay, and sidechain to that external sound. And none of the other devices I have here really do sidechain. Um, certainly with Electron, you can, you know, you can kind of get sidechain type effects, but it's not a true sidechain compression. And that's pretty unique. That's so the ability to add sidechain to external effects or to external devices for relatively cheap is a pretty unique thing with the Novation Circuit tracks. And um, but that's kind of that was the main feature that it came down to for me. Is like, is it worth 
getting the tracks just for this side chain capability. And at the end of the day, I decided, no, it's not really worth it just for that. Um, there's so many other limitations for it that I, I couldn't quite get past. And um, basically what I wanted was like something like, ooh, like a combination of the model samples and the circuit, you know. So if, if these, this, this is my dream, part of my fever dreams is if Novation and Electron got together and had a baby, <laughs> they put together the circuit line and the model cycles, model samples line of devices. Those get merged together into one thing. I think that would be really beautiful because I think Electron, like in terms of the brain of the device, Electron wins. Like Electron the sequencer is so deep and so it's just so cool. There's so many things you can do with it um, uh, that the circuit just can't do. Now that said, the Novation sequencer is not bad. I think it's great, and it, I think it has a really um, Novation's really good at their UI design, user interface design. The ability, the capabilities that this thing has with no screen and just kind of these colored, uh, this like colored pad feedback, is actually really good. And um, I think it's, it's, it's an interesting approach and a useful approach in a lot of cases. And, but there's just so many, like, so many shortcomings in the, the brain of it uh, in terms of the, its sequencing capabilities. And then also it's, it's sound, I'll say it's sound altering capabilities. Because like, if you load this up with samples that are already perfect and you love them, and you just play back those samples, then of course it's gonna sound great. But if you want to take those samples and like tweak them, you know, g give yourself like, say an 808 kit and then tweak that 808 kit to make it crazy and weird this can't really do that much whereas this can do so much you could take you know an 808 kick and turn it into a, a like a lead oscillator <laughs> like it's crazy you can do so much with this with any old sample um, and so it, it really just it the sound design capabilities here are so much vastly higher and the sequencing complexity capabilities are so much vastly higher. And I want both of those smashed into one box. That's what I want. And I was hoping that the circuit tracks would be that, but unfortunately it is not. Um, but I'm not here to bash on the circuit tracks. I think for what it is, it's, it's great. And I think it is actually a pretty good value for what it is. But I guess the, the revelation that I had while I was deep diving all this is like, I was looking at the circuit tracks and circuit rhythm being $400 uh, new price and they're starting to come out on the used market, but they're new enough that there's not really much of a used market yet. So we'll call those ones $400. Um, that compared to all the cheaper stuff that I'm, that I'm showing here, you know, the model series for 300, the OG circuit for like 250 ish. Um, the, the Folkas for, you know, hundred to 130 ish. Like these are real cheap in terms of that value per dollar. Um, the Novation circuit, uh, tr sorry, the Novation circuit tracks, I think it's, it just falls a little bit short. Is it actually worth 400 right now? I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really on the fence about that. I have a theory that about a year from now, you know, sometime in like mid to late 2022, the, the circuit tracks and the circuit rhythm will have depreciated enough where they are closer to the like 350 to $300 range. And at that point, I think I'm going to say like, yes, that's a solid buy. You're getting a lot for your money. But where they are right now at $400, I think, I think it's stretching it a bit. Um, in terms of what they can do and what they can't do. So where I'm going with all this is that as I was deep diving on the circuit tracks, I was looking at that $400 price point as being like the upper limit of this is, this is kind of the most expensive groove box that I would consider is $400, right? And then compared to everything below that, it just threw me into this, you know, months long vacillation of like, oh, is it worth it? Is it not worth it? Comparing features, all these things, deep diving on videos. And as it came out of that at the other end, basically, you know, what I decided is that uh, I want the electron power with the Novation UI, and that just doesn't exist today. I hope it does in the future. Um, and in order to actually achieve what I wanted, I needed to get rid of this $400 price ceiling that I had arbitrarily put on myself. Now, that wasn't because I, I needed, you know, that budget for financial reasons. It was just because the circuit tracks seemed like kind of the highest level groove box that was available at the time. Well, then uh, through a, a Reddit post that I made and people commenting back and, and discussions we had there, well, people basically, uh, various people recommended that I look at the Electron Digitone. And I am so glad they did because 
this was the answer, basically. Um, now, I bought this used total with shipping and all that. I ended up paying $630 for this. So that's significantly more than the $400 circuit tracks. But for that extra $200, $230, um, I get significantly more capability to the point where I think the circuit tracks, if I had bought it, is something that I would outgrow within a year or three. Whereas the Digitone, I it's gonna be a long time before I feel like I've outgrown this, um, five years plus probably. So what is the Digitone? Let's talk about it. Um, it's marketed as an FM synthesizer, and it is. It is an FM synthesizer. Um, however, there's a lot of other FM synths out there. Like for example, I have the Volca FM, right? Which is fantastic. Volca FM is an FM synthesizer um, in the Volca form factor. It's very cheap, um, it can load uh, DX7 patches, so you can play all these classic DX7 sounds on it, and it's fantastic. Um, in terms of its sound design capabilities, like, it's actually quite deep. You can do quite a bit with it. It just, um, its UI is not great. And so most people that end up trying to make FM sounds with it end up using Dext, which is the, um, the free uh, software, the free kind of VST companion for it. Um, and so basically what you would do is you'd make your FM patch on the computer using Dext, and then you would export it as a file and send it to the Volca FM and then play it from there, you know, preferably on a big keyboard or something. And, and I did that for a while and it's fun. Um, I, I didn't do a whole bunch of patch creation, but I used other people's patches and I load them on there as, so basically I ended up using the FM, the Volca FM as like a preset, an FM preset box. So I'd start with a preset that somebody else wrote or one of the classic DX7 ones, and I would tweak it a bit and I'd play my stuff on it. And it's great. Um, now, now that I have the Digitone, uh, probably the Volca FM is gonna collect a bit of dust in my studio and you know maybe I'll eventually sell it as well. Um, what the Digitone does that's very different is that it has actually a very good UI um, in terms of how to design synth patches. And the, the way that Electron designed this, it's not, it's not like a full-fledged FM synth. It's actually kind of a truncated or like contained FM synth. So um, like, for example, you only have eight algorithms to pick from here, which, I mean, there, there's a lot you can do with these, those eight algorithms, um, but that's really not that much. Like something else I've been deep diving on lately is the, um, the Korg Op6, which is their latest big FM synth. And you know it, it's expensive. Also, it's eight hundred dollars. Um, it's pretty new. It's funny. At the time that I bought the Digitone, the used price, or sorry, the the Korg Op Six. I think the retail price is seven hundred dollars new. But I've seen it as eight hundred dollars in certain shops. So mm, I don't know. But um, the used price when I bought the Digitone actually happened to match up perfectly with the used price on the Op Six. Uh, so I could have bought an Op Six for the same price that I paid for the Digitone, even though these are different, uh, you know, the Op6 is much newer, the Digitone is much older, which I thought was interesting. But the Korg Op6, it allows you to deep, deep, deep dive into FM synthesis. It's designed to allow you to create your own FM patches and like go really deep with that. And, um, and I think that's fantastic. And I think there's still room for one of those in my more distant studio future, but I've decided I don't need it now. Um, but what Korg lacks is the sequencer depth. Um, the Op6, as well as their other stuff, like I have a bunch of Volcas, I have the Minilog XD, the kind of Korg sequencer in general, is it just has a lot of limitations. The biggest one being 16 steps, uh, no pattern chaining, <laughs> which is just, I, I can't get past that limitation. I've, I find it very hard to write music, uh, you know, in 16 or fewer steps with no pattern chaining. It just, just doesn't work for me. So um, so I almost, I, I have a ton of sound, a ton of Korg, uh, gear, but basically all of my core gear outside of the sample, the Volca sample, all the rest of my core gear, I use them as purely instruments. I use them to make sounds, to do sound design and generate sounds and play them, but I don't really use their sequencers. Um, I will sometimes use the Korg sequencer to record a bit of motion automation as a way of getting like extra LFO type of movement, um, but that's kind of it. Whereas Electron has in my opinion, the best, if not one of the best uh, sequencers out there. Um, even, you know, even in terms of like the, the model samples and the model cycle sequencer, it's really, really dang good. It has, yes, it has its polyphonic limitation. It doesn't do poly polyphony, but 
man, it's so good at what it can do. The Digitone kind of lifts that restriction. It, full, it does full polyphony. Um, this has eight voices, and you can, you can choose how you want to allocate those eight voices over four different tracks. So you could do it where each of the four tracks gets two voices. You could do it where one track uh, gets five voices, and each of the other three get one each. Uh, any, com any combination you want. You can do it where all of the tracks just share all eight voices, and they will eventually start voice stealing from each other if you go over eight notes at a time. So like, it's extremely flexible with how you use and allocate those voices. Um, and it has the electron sequencer that I just love so much. Um, 64 steps plus pattern chaining plus scale so you can you can make you can reduce the step resolution to make your steps even longer if you want it to be more of like a 128 step sequence plus conditional triggers plus I mean there's just so much in here like even uh, a lot of times when I'm using the electron sequencer I actually do still work within that 16 step sequence length but you can do all of this like crazy stuff to make it sound like a longer sequence for example I could have this note or this sample trigger you know, once every four playthroughs of that 16 step sequence. Well, I've now just effectively made it a 64 step sequence because there's, even though it's 16 notes repeating over and over, there's variation that happens on every 64th step, for example. So it's just incredibly versatile, which you can do, plus full pattern chaining, right? So you can, yeah, you can really just do anything you want with this. Um, so are there limitations in terms of the depth of FM synthesis? Yes, absolutely, there are. Um, this is not as deep as a, I'd say, more dedicated FM synth. What they did do with this to try to, I think, make it more approachable is um, they added a lot of the subtractive synthesis kind of workflow. So basically what that means is they added a filter, uh, well, two filters actually, um, after, the, um, after the FM synth generation. And they also added an amplitude envelope, an amplitude envelope. So um, basically you can create your FM sounds with all the wild complexity of FM. And then you can tame those sounds with uh, filters and amp envelopes. And that makes it so much easier to use this as an instrument because FM gets wild and you get all sorts of, you know, there's harmonics that you do want, but you will get harmonics that you don't want. And you will get like, you know, weird kind of clipping, clicky sounds and all kinds of stuff that you probably don't actually want. And with this, you know, you can, you can do just use your filters like you can create a wild sound where like say the lower frequencies sound great and the higher frequencies sound kind of crap and then just filter it out and you're good and so the the digitone i think is is a a contained or simplified fm synth but i think that really the marketing of this calling it an fm synth is a little bit off because i would say that in my opinion what this is is a groove box in which all of the sounds are FM based. They're, they're based on um, FM synthesis. Now, why do I call this groove box? Well, for one, it has multiple tracks. It has four different tracks. And it's fully capable of making both melodic and percussive sounds. So, you know, by comparison, um, the, the model samples, it plays samples. Now, those samples could be something like you know, a drum kit where, of course, it's going to make percussive sounds, or you could also have samples of synth sounds, right? I could, I can have, I do actually have samples of chords. I have samples of like, you know, whatever Moog synth or whatever fanciness that's on here, right? You, and you can just play back those sounds and you'll have some ability to tweak those sounds, certainly not as much as the original synth itself, but some ability to tweak those sounds. And, um, and that's all great. Um, but, but still it's, it's sample based. It's, it's, sounds that you're bringing to the device and then tweaking from there. Um, with the exception of the wave cycle synthesis that I talked about, that's where you're actually generating your own new tones on the fly. Sorry, there's a lot of complexity here. <laughs> so with the Digitone, um, you're creating all the sounds in this box. There's no way of importing sounds to it. I think you can import other people's like FM presets, you know, or your own FM presets, but still that's, that's just an algorithm or a, a program telling this box how to make a sound. It, all the sound is actually still generating from this box. So it is a legit synthesizer um, with four tracks. And with these four tracks, you can layer those eight different voices. So for example, you could have track, track one be a drum track. 
And um, so you, you can use this to make, uh, let's say it's your kick drum type of sound. Track one is your kick drum. Track two is like a, a more snare and hi-hat kind of sound. And then say track three is your bass line and track four is your melodic lead. And you have to keep that all contained within the eight voice limitation, but that's not that much of a limitation. You can do a heck of a lot with that. And I mean, I think there are, of course, I've deep dived on this too before I bought it. And there are some incredible, incredible musicians out there making music, making, I would say, absolutely complete songs using purely the digitone, using the four tracks, as well as the pattern chaining to have a song that evolves over time. And um, the workflow for that is just really good. You, you write something that you want, you know, you write a sequence that you like, you copy it over into the next pattern slot, you chain those two together, and you start tweaking the second pattern to get some variation, and just rinse and repeat. And you can have this go up to, I don't even know what the limit is. Um, you, you, can, you can make an incredibly long, I mean, you, you could make a probably 30 minute song easily on this if you wanted to, right? Um, so there's kind of no, no limitation in my mind in that sense. Um, now, if we're comparing this to higher level dedicated sequencers and things like that, you know, for example, the Synthstrom Deluge comes to mind. It's one I've never used, um, but I've, I've researched into that a bit as well. You know, that's a lot more expensive. It's a thousand dollars new on that one. I think I see it around 800 ish used. So it, it's a pretty expensive box. It does everything in one box, but like when you're getting into that level, you're more in the DAW in a box type of uh, workflow. And I would say the whole MPC series is getting more that way too, where it's like, uh, it's just a DAW in a different form factor. Instead of being on a laptop with a keyboard and a mouse and maybe a MIDI controller, you're now in a different box that's designed to be a DAW. Certainly that is more pleasant, I think, than using a laptop, but effectively it's the same kind of thing. Whereas something like the Digitone, and I'd say by extension the Digitact also, is um, it's more limiting, it's more contained. Uh, you can't do everything with it, but that's a positive thing in my opinion and I think in a lot of musicians opinion limitations are your friends you don't want something that necessarily does everything in one box you want something that allows you to work creatively within a limited space and that's what the digit tone and the digit attack um, really 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 excel at so the other thing that this does um, and when when I was in that period of like, I was so close to getting the circuit tracks and deciding like, well, there's all these limitations, but oh well, it's good enough for what I need right now. The thing that I also like about the circuit tracks and the original circuit and these other boxes is the, the ability to sequence external MIDI gear with them. I'm really into that because I have all these, you know, Volcas and the Minilog XD and all these other synths that I love as sound sources, but I, don't, I want to sequence them with something else. And so um, the circuit track can do that and has a lot of nice ability to out or export MIDI sequences and play them live. And even to do stuff like mutes, you know, on the fly where you can mute the MIDI sequence and that kind of thing, which is cool. The Digitone does all that as well. And that's really what tipped this over in my mind, kind of my revelation is that, oh, the Digitone is not just an FM synth. It is a full on sequencer as well. Like it has, um, I think it's eight tracks. I hope I'm not saying that wrong. It might be four tracks. I think it's eight tracks of, um, MIDI sequencing that you can do where I can export, uh, you know, a MIDI sequence to up to, oh, I should look it up, is either four or eight <laughs> different external synths. Um, and, uh, you know, and so I can, I can do like I was saying where I have, you know, write my, my drum kit on one or two tracks. I have my bass line in, on a track. I have my lead on a track and I can export all of that to external synths and then free up the Digitone itself for a completely brand new layer of my song, right? Um, so in that sense of my desired workflow of grabbing a box, going out to the park, going out to the cafe or out to the beach or whatever, or even just sitting on the couch, sitting in my backyard, messing around, making the kernel of a song, getting the ideas down quickly, the sketch pad, the musical sketch pad kind of workflow. Then bring it home uh, to the studio, plug it into all my other gear, send those MIDI sequences out to a bunch of other gear, and then maybe add more layers on top of it. The Digitone does all of that. It does all of that. I would say not just as well, but even better than the Circuit Tracks does. Now, the big difference there, I think, is just the UI. The Circuit Tracks has this really nice, you know, the nice gummy, um, like, drum pads. It's, it's definitely smaller. This thing's 
thick and hefty. It's pretty heavy because it's all metal. It's really solid. The circuit tracks um, and circuit rhythm are very lightweight and small. It's more like, it's almost like an iPad. They're so kind of small and thin with the internal battery. This does not have the internal battery. You know, there, there's trade-offs of course, but like in terms of its, its functionality as a music writing device, the Digitone goes so much deeper. And <laughs> that, that thing I was really excited about with the tracks um, of being able to route audio in and then control it. Well, the Digitone does that too. It actually has audio inputs and you can take whatever external gear, route a stereo signal in through the Digitone and apply the Digitone's effects. Now those effects are decay and reverb and I think that's it. And I will say that in terms of, to my ears, at least just listening to the sounds that come out of it, the decay and reverb on the Digitone is so much more interesting uh, and, and customizable. Like you can get in there and you can really tweak a ton of parameters on both those effects. Um, and you can apply that to stuff, right? So compared to the circuit, the, the effects on the circuit, um, also decay and reverb, I think are just basically you're on that one, you're picking from a bunch of preset decay and reverbs. And like, I think they sound good, but they just sound like this is a decay. This is a reverb. Um, they don't sound that interesting to me. Whereas the ones on this, I think sound really, really interesting. Now for my purposes, I also really like having external effects. I use the Korg NTS-1 as my primary effects box right now. I actually have two of them. And so I'll do two parallel effects change through NTS-1s. So, um, and I also think that as I get into this further, I'm probably going to get even fancier dedicated effects boxes in the future. Um, so the ability to have onboard effects, I think it's nice is it absolutely critical? No, I don't think it's absolutely critical, but it's definitely nice. And in terms of like, if you want to write an entire song in one box, yeah, having the onboard effects is pretty critical in that sense. So again, this does lack sidechain. Um, it would be cool if it had it. It would be cool if uh, that functionality could come over here. And that's something that I think is still pretty unique to the circuit tracks. And for the type of music where that pumping sidechain effect is just paramount, um, yeah, the circuit tracks may still end up being a better device for that one particular type of music. But for what I like to make, ambient, IDM, generative music, uh, wild sounds, the Digitone by far does more. Um, by the way, as I've been touching this, you may have heard a bit of this <laughs> through my mic here. This, um, the UI on this, it's interesting because, uh, like, so compared to the circuit, you know, the circuit has these gummy drum pads. They don't make a lot of noise and um, they're velocity sensitive. And you can, I think you can get some really great expressive play off of this. I'm a piano player originally, so I really still like having a piano keyboard. And with any of these devices, I often will plug in a piano keyboard to play them on that style of, of MIDI input, but that's just personal preference. You, you know, there's also MIDI electronic wind instruments or like electronic drum kits or like whatever. You can use whatever MIDI controller you like. So I'm not too focused on that. Um, but I will say that the, the pads on here are decent. They're pretty, pretty good. And the pads on the new circuits, I think are even better. The pads on the SL Mark III that I own, I think are quite excellent. Um, and that's something where the model samples falls really short. These pads are terrible. They're just not good at all. Um, they're, they're, I stopped thinking them of them as drum pads because if you try to do finger drumming type stuff, it's just not good. I think of them as pressure pads where I will like lean into them and press down on them and use, use that as a modulation source. And for that, they're cool. But yeah, as velocity sensitive drum pads, these fall really short. The Digitone has no velocity sensitive input whatsoever, which is, you know, it's a significant downside. Um, now in the software, you can go into each step and change the velocity. So you can play something in and then after the fact, go through and modify the velocity. That's okay. Um, I think you can also apply the LFO to the velocity. I might be wrong on that, but, um, and certainly if you're using an external keyboard or some other type of MIDI input instrument, it'll pull velocity from that. And I think it'll pull aftertouch from that as well. So, um, so it's fully capable of, you know, speaking the language of velocity. It just can't do it with its, its little clicky buttons down here. And I will say that when I looked into this thing before, these little clicky buttons, I wasn't sure about them. Um, I was like, it, do I really want, you know, non-velocity sensitive clicky buttons to be my main input when I'm just, you know, chilling on the couch or whatever. And after using this thing for a while, I can say that they're actually an absolute joy to use. Um, it's different from every other device I have because I'm, I'm used to more of, you know, the gummy drum pad kind of things. And what these are more like 
frankly, they're kind of like a computer keyboard. They're like, like a mechanical gaming keyboard kind of feel to it. Now, I don't actually own a gaming keyboard, so I'm, I, that might be completely inaccurate. But I mean, I've certainly heard people typing on MIDI key, or on gaming keyboards, and they sound like that. <laughs> and you know, of course, I have regular computer keyboards, um, the softer office-y business variety. And I would say these are more pleasant than that. Um, they just, they feel good. The main thing I like about these is that they, whatever like springs are underneath them are strong. And so they pop back up immediately. And so they will allow you to do really quick note input. Um, whereas, for example, on the model samples, I've already talked about these drum pads, pretty terrible. But also these ones here, which are fixed velocity, um, these pads down here for this like chromatic keyboard, they're just, because they're gummy, they're kind of slow to pop back up. And so you can't actually really tap them really quickly. Like it'll miss notes because they haven't fully popped back up again. Um, so this one for kind of fast playing, this is worse. Um, and then I will say actually that on the budget end of things, the Volca sample is impressively good at responding to fast notes. This, this, this touchpad is like instantaneous because there is no actual movement or travel. So it's, it's just instantaneous. Um, but you can very easily accidentally hit the one next to you and have a bit of, you know, bit of messiness there. So pros and cons there. But um, I will actually say the Volca sample is really good for quickly inputting stuff. Um, of course, with no velocity sensitivity there either. But but yeah, I'm pleasantly surprised by these clicky buttons. I really enjoy playing them. Um, and it's kind of cool how in the different chromatic modes versus like scale modes, it will just light up the ones that are active and all the other ones will be dead. So you can basically have this you know, be a scale and just play those particular ones and know you're always playing in scale. Um, the other devices do similar things as well. Um, I just think it's it's pretty well implemented on the Digitac, or sorry, the Digitone. <laughs> and I find it, um, I find it intuitive and pleasant and fun. I was also initially kind of turned off by like the deep menu diviness of this. Um, and that basically everything is, you know, through the screen, through these encoders, whatever screen you on determines what the encoders are going to do. And that's, I think, generally considered to be a bad thing. It's the, you know, the model samples is the opposite of that. It's very one knob per function where, you know, this knob always does the same thing no matter what screen or mode you're in, right? And that's simpler and it's, I think it's really better for like a live performance kind of thing. But for, um, for what I'm trying to do with the Digitone of using it like a musical scratch pad, the UI is actually really good. It's really, really intuitive. It works well. Um, the fact that all these different knobs do different things isn't a problem because it's all very well laid out on the screen and, and labeled on the screen based on whatever screen you want. For the most part, it tells you, okay, knob E controls this, knob A controls this. Like it just tells you on the screen. So like there's no guesswork to it. And I think that's a really positive thing. And I will say that's something I have to say that's critical about, um, uh, that's a criticism I have of the Novation Circuit where if you're using this day in and day out, this is, it will be muscle memory workflow, no problem. But if you're more like me and you're picking this up every two to three weeks to play with it, um, the, a lot of that muscle memory just kind of goes out the window and I have to relearn how to do things and I forget how to do things. And because there's no screen to give me feedback, you have to memorize their patterns of colors and arrangements of, of the grid of, of buttons and stuff like that. And I don't know. It, to me, it's it's not really as good. Um, every time I pick this up, there's there's always some moments of friction where I'm like, oh shoot, I want to do this. How do I do this? Okay, there it is. I figure it out. Um, you know, usually I figure it out. I rarely have to like pull out the manual, but it's definitely not. It's not quite as fluid. And that's the downside of not having a screen is that if you don't have it thoroughly memorized, you're gonna struggle a little bit from a time to time. Now that said, I mentioned that my daughter loves this thing. She's four. She doesn't know how to read yet. So having a screen on something doesn't help her at all. Um, and this kind of arrangement of colored grids and knobs and stuff like that, that's her language. Like she can speak that fluidly. And so she's, I'm, I'm amazed how quickly she's picking up like how to use the sequencer on this. That's not something I would expect a four-year-old to be able to do, but she totally can because it's such a visual language. Um, you know, it's not English, it's just colors. And so in that sense, I think that if I was going to recommend something to somebody who's not a native English speaker and struggles with reading English, the circuit might be a really good option for that because it's it's kind of languageless. You know what I mean? Um, now that said, having to read through the manual, watch YouTube videos, all that, you know, 
they might struggle with that if, if, if that's not in their language. But, um, but yeah, I, I would say that th there's definitely something to be said for the screenless UI, um, but you're, it's gonna be something where you're gonna wanna use it very frequently to get it to be purely memorized. Otherwise, you're gonna fumble around a little bit. Um, and I think that's, I'm going to assume that that's gonna carry over to the circuit tracks and the circuit rhythm as well, because they have that same UI aesthetic. Whereas Electron, they just give you a screen, they give you feedback. As long as you can read English, you know, you know what it is you're doing. Um, maybe they display other languages too. I'm not really sure. I've never tried to change it. So yeah, this is wrapping up, like I said, uh, two-ish months of just like fever dreams and gas and deep diving and YouTube videos. I watched, I don't know how many hours, an embarrassing amount of hours of YouTube videos, reading Reddit threads, reading blog posts, reading, you know, the various reviewer sites and stuff like that, deep diving and all this stuff. And um, I think there's like, there's kind of some fundamental philosophical differences between the way these different manufacturers approach things. And the two big ones in my mind here are Novation and Electron. As I've already said, Korg, I love what Korg does, but their sequencer brains, eh, they just fall really flat. Um, and so with Novation and Electron, they really have, I think, this the industry leading in terms of at least the cheaper end mass production devices, the industry leading sequences that are out there. And um, I, I will say in very broad strokes um, to generalize a lot, uh, Novation is, the Novation sequencer is really good for people that want to make very um, melody driven music. So where the, the you know, the chords, the lead lines, um, that kind of stuff are really forward in the mix. Like they're really, that's what you're mostly focused on. Now, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with the percussive abilities of something like the circuit, um, especially with the sample flip capability. Like it can do really cool and complex um, uh, rhythm sections. Uh, and I, there's, I have no, no bad things to say about that. Um, it's not as deep as Electron, but still, not every musical genre needs that amount of depth. So yeah, 12 total voices of synth uh, polyphony across the two different synths on this, like that's an incredible amount of um, melodic songwriting capability in, in such a cheap box, right? And the circuit track certainly has that as well. Um, so I think for somebody who's writing very melody driven music, um, I think that Novation, the Novation sequencer approach, uh, their, the sequencer philosophy, probably is, is going to be the better fit, um, especially if you're going for more of a mainstream kind of sound, right? Um, the type of pop music that winds up on the radio, for example, absolutely can be written with the Novation sequencer. Um, I don't mean purely the circuit. I mean, probably you're gonna write it in the circuit um, and then incorporate other instruments into the final, uh, the final song, right? But still, in terms of the complexity of the sequencer, this it's deep enough to cover basically all mainstream music and the workflow is good it's just it's really good i really do actually enjoy working on this um the you know the quickness of inputting chords and changing that sequence over time and stuff like that it's just good it's it's a good workflow it's a good ui um so i think that there's there's a strong use case for the novation approach to all of this stuff okay well i just talked for about uh 10 minutes with my mic powered off so um Lucky you, you get to spare yourself that. Um, so anyway, I think where I want to be is just to, to kind of wrap a lot of this a lot of this up. And so for for the past you know two or so months, I just really deep dived on all this stuff and just had all this vacillation back and forth of what's worth it and what's not, and comparing all these features and all that. And just you know, kind of where where I ended up is um, the the this core question that I kept asking myself is what's better, the novation approach, the Novation sequencer, the kind of really interesting intuitive UI, um, the lack of screens, you know, this, this whole Novation world, or the Electron approach where it's, it's um, I think, a bit more cerebral, a bit more technical. Um, you know, there are screens and you're like doing more menu diving, things are getting, you know, deeper in general, but you also have more breadth, more power, you can just do more stuff with it. Um, you know, which is better? And the answer is yes, they're both excellent. They're both great in their own way. Um, they just kind of each lean in slightly different directions. So in very broad strokes, very, very, you know, very much generalizing here, 
I would say that the Novation is going to be better for um, kind of more mainstream music, uh, pop music, and, and also just very more um, melody-driven music, more melodic music, where, you know, the, the chord progressions you're writing and the melodic lines and all that are just, that's kind of the centerpiece of the song. That's really what you want to hear. Um, you know, that said, you know, people make really great rhythm sections with Novation products as well. I'm not saying you can't do that. Um, but I think that those rhythm sections are going to end up being somewhat simpler, uh, especially in terms of timing. Um, they're, you know, they're just not going to be quite as crazy. And that's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Plenty of great genres out there um, that that is, uh, that's what's appropriate for, where kind of the rhythm's a bit more in the background and the melody is a bit more in the foreground, right? And so I think for that type of thing, I think Novation is going to probably be the better approach. Um, for the opposite, the type of music where the rhythm is really more in the foreground and the melody is a bit more in the background, I think that's where the Electron approach uh, really shines because the Electron sequencer allows you to create extremely complex rhythms with all the kind of little rolls and trills and, you know, fast stuff and slow stuff and polyrhythms and polymeter and like all, all this types of stuff you can do. Now, Novation can do some of that, but it definitely can't do all of it. Um, circuit really just, get, or so the Electron, I mean, Electron really just gives you full depth, uh, kind of in terms of like, if, if you can imagine it, you can do it. And even things that you can't really imagine that you just stumble upon. Um, I think that like the, for me, at least the way I've been using them, the, um, the Electron workflow, it really caters towards this like sound and, and pattern exploration space where, I maybe start with like a general sound. I'm like, okay, that sounds cool. And then I start tweaking and get into like something really wild and cool. Or, you know, or, and, or I start with a pretty basic pattern, right? Like say I start with a four in the floor kick drum pattern, just totally standard. And then from there, I build on it and make it more complex and make it more interesting and wind up somewhere that I couldn't really imagine when I started. I just, I started somewhere simple and then I explored until I got to somewhere complex and interesting. And for me, for this, the way that I write music, that's, that's my, that's my flow. That's my style. So like, I don't necessarily come into it with, oh, Hey, I have this idea for a song. I want it to sound like this. And I want this to be here and this to be here. That's just not the way my brain works. I come into it with like, Hey, I want to chill and make some music. I'm going to sit down and start putting in some basic stuff and then start tweaking and see where I wind up. Uh, so it's very much more kind of open exploration i mean just like blindly feeling around into these different parameters to see like oh what does this do what will this do and the the electron uh workflow i think is far more conducive to that um with the novation workflow especially with the circuit series like you're just you're so limited in how you can tweak things you um and i think it's a common complaint of the circuit series and the nova synth engine in general that like people will say and i, I agree with this that you have an idea of like oh i want this kind of sound and you can get pretty close. You can get like 90% of the way there, but you just can't quite get all the way there because they just don't give you the depth of sound design capabilities. Um, unless you're willing to go to the computer, use the component software to really deep dive on their synth engine, then you probably can get there. But I personally am not willing to do that. And I think a lot of people that are into this kind of hardware don't want to do that. So um, if, yeah, if, if you want the more exp exploratory side of things, I think definitely Electron is, is the way to go there. Um, but yeah, again, neither of these are really better or worse than the other. They're just kind of better for this thing and worse for that or vice versa. And so that's kind of the, you know, the, the big, big epiphanies that I came to after these, these months of, of obsession, um, is twofold. One, the Digitone is actually a groove box. It's not just an FM synth. Uh, if you, if you pigeonhole this, uh, just as an FM synth, you're overlooking a huge amount of its capabilities. This is a groove box in all the same ways that the circuit tracks is a groove box um, because you know it has audio in capabilities, it has full MIDI capabilities, it has all the abilities to make both rhythm, uh, percussive, and melodic sounds all within this one box. You know it can just it can do all of it. And um, so yeah, I, I would I would say that um, my argument is that this is one of the kind of higher tier groove boxes that are out there. And if you're looking for a really, really feature-rich groove box. Um, there's always going to be trade-offs, of course, but if you're looking for something that can just do a lot, especially in the more exploratory and avant-garde uh, genres of music, yeah, 
the Digitone and its companion, the Digitact, really, really excellent for that. Um, but for me personally, what I'm looking for right now, the Digitone with the FM tones that it makes, just absolutely beautiful um, and highly recommended. Um, whereas if you're looking for, you know, something more to make, I would just say more mainstream genres like, um, you know, hip hop and uh, I can't even think of what it is right now. But, you know, the, the type of music that you're more likely to hear on the radio, I think is probably going to be a better fit for the innovation workflow. Um, it's just it's just kind of more standard. And if you have this sense of like, I want to write this type of pattern, this type of sequence, it, you're probably going to have an easier time doing that on the innovation sequencer. Um, whereas it's like, if you're like, I want this type of sound, you might have a harder time doing that with Novation. Um, so the, it's, it's just, it's pros and cons on both sides, right? So it's hard to say that one's better than the other. I don't think one is better than the other. And now that I have all the boxes, I'm going to, I just use them side by side sometimes. Like, and I'm kind of in my, you know, quote unquote, in the studio in my like full space and I'm have energy. I have creative energy and I have time to like sit down and just actually make music for a couple hours. I'll have my Novation SL Mark III, big flagship MIDI controller in front of me. And that is connected to all these other little sound making devices. Um, you know, and I'll have the Electron boxes here too. And usually I'll have the Electron handling the rhythm section and Novation handling all of the other, you know, melodic sections. And like, that is a really beautiful ideal pairing. Um, that said, do I recommend getting both of these side by side to pair with? Eh, probably not. I would say pick one and see, you know, see if it works for you and then, you know, see what else you want to pair it with. But um, uh, probably getting one of these two and then pairing it with some more fully fledged synth uh, is, is great. So like one thing I'm really looking forward to, for example, is the Digitone plus the Minilog XD because that gives me FM synthesis, analog synthesis. The XD can also do like vector synthesis and other stuff. So it like gives me all these different synthesis styles all in two little boxes that can all wrap together nicely. And like, that's gonna be pretty cool. So like there's, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with that. Um, so yeah, this has been long-winded, of course, um, as all my stuff is, <laughs> but uh, hopefully this has been um, enjoyable or helpful for somebody out there who's in this similar space of just like going, you know, deep into this world of groove boxes and sequencers and trying to weigh all the pros and cons of everything and figure out what's right for you. And, you know, the thing is, yeah, there's, there's no one right solution for everyone. Um, you know, what I'm picking is based on my, my lifestyle right now and, and what I need. And um, a lot of what I need right now is the ability to sit on the couch at the end of a long day. You know, it's, it's 10 p.m. I've put my kid to bed. I'm exhausted from a long day of work. I have maybe an hour or two before I have to go to bed myself. And I just wanna, I just wanna melt away with some nice, beautiful ambient tones and like some interesting sequences and patterns. And I have not found anything better than the Digitone for that particular purpose. Like this thing is just absolutely incredible. Um, so yeah, that's, that's where I'm at. Um, and again, thanks, thanks for joining. Hope this was helpful. Cheers.